Welcome back, and today is the topic I'm sure you have all been eagerly anticipating. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> At least, <laughs> right? <laughs> we are going to be talking about sex, and um, I'm probably going to act a little bit like a nervous schoolgirl in middle school or something because I don't necessarily love talking about this in front of the whole world no? as a 45-year-old woman. Um, but here we are, and it's important to talk about it. Yeah, and we're going to approach, or broach, broach, approach, approach, I don't, you guys can figure out what word I'm looking for. Right. We're going to talk about some subject, subject matter that is very sensitive, um, but I think it's prevalent, and I think we do need to talk about some of this stuff, so it's going to come out, we're going to talk about it, you guys need to talk about it too. It's not going to be easy, and it may take multiple times for you guys to get everything out in the open, but... It's important about, again, communication, talking about this stuff. And if you're not talking about it, it's just being hidden and it's going to push you apart. So, And we'll going in. back to intimacy, you can't grow in intimacy if you're not discussing some yeah. of these things. Trust. Yep, trust. And, and let's start off kind of easy. Let's talk about desire because okay. that's easy. easy. Right, really easy. That's been... <laughs> <laughs> That'll tell you where the next topics are going. Um that's been a hot button topic for us. Yeah. Um, we've gotten fights about desire because I've said, like, I feel like you, you feel like you got me yeah. and now you never have to pursue me again. And <laughs> well, I think that's how we think. Like men, we love um, the hunt. We love the prowl. Like we want to do everything right and we want to make a good impression. And, you know, we do that in the dating period um, when we're pursuing you. And, uh, but it's like a hunt when we get you. <laughs> We win. When you pounce, like and then it's done. like, okay, now what? Uh, I've killed you. Right. <laughs> like, what? Now, yeah, now do my bidding. So, I, and I think we get stuck in that really easily. And, you know, we're going to be talking about romance um, next. So, Come, not next, but not a couple, next. Yeah, couple okay, topics. Okay, soon. So that's, that's going to play a part in this too. But yeah, pursuit, that, that's a challenge. Um, that's something that, that I have to really work on on a daily basis. And I fail constantly honestly so and she can uh, yeah she'll tell you all about it although i have flowers here somewhere that's true from, i did i did it right once we showed up in our hotel room and he had flowers waiting for me so that was very sweet yes. but um that is something that i am constant not constantly but consistently probably like i feel like you're not pursuing me <laughs> again <laughs> <laughs> I need a little romance. I need some romance. Um, so they kind of go hand in hand. But um, some heavier topics that we address in the mm -hmm. book. Um, addictions. Um, yeah. Pornography was brought into our relationship that was very detrimental to our sex life. Yeah. And just, Sensitive subject. Um, and it's hard. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. You know, when I think of it, it brings shame. And, you know, I feel terrible about it. And grew up. I mean, you can read in the book, um, started at a very young age and didn't know how to let go of it. Um, I thought it was about sex, uh, but it wasn't. It really wasn't. It was about checking out and avoiding. And it was just a wall that I couldn't climb. And, you know, when it came to the forefront and we had to confront it head on, it it sucked. I mean, it was to hard. have to reveal that um, to Jess was very challenging. And I think and, but we did, we did communicate it and it wasn't easy. Uh, and I think it, it often ends marriages, but I think it also can bring you closer, but it's not, it's not going to be easy. Um, and we, we read this stuff about the reason that this, I decided to share this publicly is we read like 97% of men struggle with it. And I, I don't even know that that's true. It's, it's probably all of us, especially in the, the culture that we live in today. So men, yeah, we live in a culture is that is so sexualized, and we've discussed too. It seems like the highest god in our culture these days yeah. is sex, or orgasm, and how much porn fuels that, and how mm -hmm. detrimental it is to intimacy and marriage. And it was a root from the pit of hell, but once yeah. we it was completely uprooted, our marriage has just flourished. Um, oh. And unfortunately, if you're suspecting like something like that is occurring in your marriage it probably is yeah. um, and I would really encourage you to get down to the nitty-gritty and figure out what's going on and open up with your spouse and 
just lay it bare because that's yeah. the first step towards healing and it'll take a while it took and, a long yeah. time for me to reach a total point of forgiveness yeah and i think get a therapist involved too because mm -hmm. it's it's going to be a bumpy road it's not going to be an easy thing to get through um and wives it's not about you right it's, it's not, not about you and it took me a long time <laughs> to figure that out and accept that as truth um that was really hard for me and I think that's really hard for a lot of women. So um, heavy, heavy stuff, but it's, you yeah. know, work that, that you can do and you can get through and you can be better for, for the effort at the end of the day. So I would really just encourage you to begin those conversations with if one you, another. If you want true intimacy, mm -hmm. you're going to have to get that out in the open and you can get past it. We're past it. I mean, it's not part of my life anymore and it hasn't been for... Like, a long time yeah almost 10 years mm -hmm. so it's freeing men I promise it's not easy but it's freeing and it brought me closer to Jess and it freed me from a lot of stuff a lot of pain and shame that I could let go of and now I feel much lighter um, and I can focus on things better and you know she's it for me so mm -hmm. I can focus on even though I still screw it up often <laughs> I can still focus on pursuing her in the way that she needs and the way pursuing she desires me, right when when it right. happens Yes, um, and he's gotten a lot better yeah. through the years. Um, and then Still some lighter, <laughs> well, some lighter <laughs> topics, you know, boundaries and bargains. And we talk <laughs> about in the book how, you know, sometimes one of us isn't in the mood. <laughs> one of us isn't one of in us. the mood. I, I don't know who that but one of us might get in the mood with like a back rub, and that works well. Right. Um, or um, even the simple act of locking the door in our marriage signifies to the other one that there's desire on the table and that, you know, helps set the mood and the headspace and all the things and, and just boundaries that we've had to put in place as well with so many kids. And now we have yeah. teenagers who are fully aware of, right. you know, what's going on in mom and dad's bedroom and figuring all those dynamics out. And, um, but it just evolves, you know, as our life evolves. Yeah, and you we... also got to talk about it. I right. Mean, it has to be out in the open. We had to discuss the stuff. You know, you laugh about the couple that puts it on the calendar. It's Don't laugh at them. <laughs> right. Don't laugh at them because they're probably having more sex than you are. So I think it's important. I think you need to talk to your wife and your husband and find out their needs and wants, desires. Um, talk it through. Figure it out. Like, you need to schedule it if you need to schedule it. That's just how it is. So plan it, um, and I think your, your wife will even appreciate that if you're planning something. And if you're not having sex, somebody's not saying something. Yeah. There, there's, I mean, that's not, that doesn't end well. No, and it's, it's, it's necessary. It I is mean, necessary. It, it, it's a need and a want, and they kind of go hand in hand, I think for a man especially, and women, Women, you're not even gonna end that statement. No. I, I don't <laughs> so. try to. I don't try to get inside their heads. <laughs> so, how many times is enough? I don't know. I right. don't think. Th I don't think there's a number. Uh, we get. We've been asked that. So, how many times should we be having sex a week? I. I don't think there's a number, but you both should be happy with whatever that looks like. Yeah, and I think it's about. Um, it's not numbers. It's how intimate is it? And, you know, are you both enjoying it? Are you both having a good time? Is it something you look forward to or something you dread? Because if you're dreading it, you could do it 10 times a week and it's still not going to achieve what it needs to uh, to bring you closer together. So men off the back about rub. It. Off for the back rub. <laughs> yeah, that always works out. That's, that's very effective. <laughs> <laughs> but make time. Like, talk about it. You have to talk about it. Yep. It's not easy and it's not. it's a very sensitive topic, but you need to discuss it. Whew, we got through we sex. Got through Next up, household. <laughs> we'll see you then. All right.